What's up guys and welcome back to the Bartender Hideout. Um, today we are going to be looking at episode number 12. Uh, yeah, we're well on our way already I'd say. Um, today we will be having a look at the Gimlet, which is also one of those interesting cocktails, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a little bit. Um, besides from that, as you guys know, we will be looking at the Drinks International uh, top 50 most popular drinks from 2020. Um, and also we will be looking at the history first afterwards i'm going to be actually showing you how to make the drink and afterwards i will tell you uh, how it tastes and if you should give it a sip yourself um, yeah but first let's get into the history When we're looking at the history for the Gimlet, um, we have to go back to 1930. Uh, that's where the first written mention comes from. And it was written down by Harry Craddock. Um, but as I said in a couple of other videos, um, this actually goes back to more of the time of when the Dutch and the English and the Spanish naval fleets kind of ruled the oceans, uh, 70, late 1700s, beginning 1800s. Um, there were a lot of ships going from here to India. Um, and around that time, this trip took, what, 23 weeks. Um, there was actually this one ship called the Suffolk. Um, they did a test there, uh, checking out if what the... the uh, what the effect was of lemons on board or lemons on limes um, if people would get less scurvy. Um, after that trip they found out that that actually did work so they made it mandatory that the whole naval fleet uh, especially in the UK they started rationing uh, lemons and limes on board to make sure that less people would get scurvy. Um, yeah as I said I've told this story before in some other videos um, uh, but this actually, they had this plan to to ration uh, across the whole fleet. But it wasn't until actually 1800 where they actually had enough limes and lemons to actually uh, have that available. So they could give all the ships the, all these lemons. Um, but and as we know, the English they really like overdoing it a little bit with their with their booze. Um, after a while, they. Uh, they had already called the, um, the drinks that they were making, they called them limeys. Since they had a form of, uh, of uh, spirit in them accompanied with some lime or with some lemon, but in this case, I guess they were called limeys since they had lime in them. Um, and that is where the real story comes from um, in, a, in a nutshell. Um, when we look at the name, the name probably uh, comes from a small tool to uh, to drill holes in the barrels that they, they used to use. There is also another story about Rear Admiral Gimlet, um, uh, Thomas Gimlet to be, uh, to be exact. He administered his medicine uh, together with Lyme to make it a little bit more easy to swallow for all, all of his patients. And that is also one of the stories where it might come from. Um, but as so often within the cocktail, uh, cocktail world, we are not 100% sure where it, is actually, where it exactly comes from. Um, but this is, a, this is a good start. Um, I think I kept you guys long enough already, so let's get to making the gimlet. Okay, so let's get started with this gimlet. Um, first, I want to cool my glass, so let's do that first. Go, get that nice and going, just to make sure that we have a nice and cool glass as we want it like normal. Um, then, apart from that, I'm going to be using our mixing glass. There's actually kind of contradicting ways because some people say you need to stir this cocktail, some people say you have to shake it. Most likely the common way to do back then was stirring it and they actually back then they probably didn't even have the ice to uh, to stir this cocktail so it was they didn't really have a chance to shake as well. Um, so that's why we're going to be shaking it but I think with this one you know it's not really wrong to do either shaking or do um, or to stir so you can do whatever you uh, whatever you prefer um, so as a first ingredient we will be using our Plymouth gin um, this is pretty much mandatory I'd say um, this is actually a gin they uh, accompanied from 1793 so this is 
Um, definitely, this was around in the time that they actually started making these gins. So using a gin from that time, which probably was would be used back then as well in the same cocktail, is uh, so seems like a good idea to me. So we're going to start off with using two ounces of gin in that one. So let's do two ounces. There we go. And then we are gonna go on with our roses uh, lime cordial. Wait, what the f is that? Roses lime cordial, you say? This is a product from 1867. It was made by Laughlin, uh, Laughlin Rose, of course, and he chose to preserve his uh, lime juice or any juices, fruit juices for that matter. He ended up preserving them with sugar to make the beautiful product that we have now and that pairs perfectly with the cocktail that you're gonna be drinking. Enjoy. So now you guys know about the Rosa's Lime Cordial, let's start adding it. Um, I'm gonna be using one ounce to add to our drink. So back in the day, um, they also, there was a time where they basically just used 50-50. Um, so there's a lot of variations in how sweet you want it, how dry you want it. Um, all depends. It's a little bit like the, like the dry martini. Um, there is a lot of variations in this one as well. So just depending on the sweetness, uh, what you prefer, I guess. Um, yeah, so that is, it's only two ingredients, so we're just gonna start adding some ice and then uh, stir. There we go. Now, give it a good stir. Um, as usual, we wanna just make sure that it's nice and cool, uh, a little diluted. Um, yeah, I think that's the main thing. If you don't have Rose's Lime Cordial, um, just make sure, or you can also just use uh, sugar syrup with uh, lime juice. It's ov obviously not exactly the same, um, but it's a good substitute for you for not having the uh, Rose's Lime Juice. Um, so yeah, that's, that's also definitely an option. Okay, so let's see how far we are here. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. This is actually one of those cocktails that even I really haven't tried before. Um, so this is a whole new experience for me as well. Um, so let's give that a go. Let's get rid of the ice. And let's get the gimlet in there. Go. Okay. And then as a garnish, um, as so often, I'd like to use the dehydrated lime, um, just since it looks nice and I can store it a little bit longer. And apart from that, there we go guys, that's your gimlet. And then I guess for the most important part, let's taste this one. I must say by the view of this, I already just like the, the color. It's not a really common color to get uh, in most cocktails, mostly they're uh, less translucent or less clear at least. It isn't as sweet as you would think. I can definitely see when you start adding 50-50, um, it's gonna, the, the sweetness is gonna overpower, which at that time probably wasn't really a problem because they wanted the sweetness to overpower. Um, but now I think when we're looking at more balanced cocktails, I think the way this one is made is a lot better. So with the two ounces and the one ounce, um, just to make sure that you just don't have your teeth fall out at the end of the drink. As a cocktail, as it goes, like as I said, I haven't tried this myself, but I think it's a, it's a good cocktail. I wouldn't necessarily order it a lot, I think, um, but that's just my personal preference. I think it's still a little bit too sweet, maybe. That is uh, basically it for the uh, Gimlet, guys. Um, if you want any more information about it, make sure to drop anything you want to know in the comments and uh, we'll try to get to you as quickly as possible. Um, apart from that, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more of us. And besides that, I'll see you guys next week. See ya.